Jay Connington here at HPE Discover in London, and I'm here with Antoine and Yaniv, and you guys represent a suite of products for building mobile applications that HPE has, and uh, can you talk a little bit about what, what's involved in that? All right, so that's a very good question, Jake. Um, so the first thing is we all want our work to be um, valuable and meaningful, right? And working with mobile apps actually um, enables us to reach millions and potentially billions of users, right, providing we do things right. And there's actually a very nice quote from uh, Ross McEwen, who's the CEO of uh, RBS, and he said, uh, in 2014, our busiest branch is the 701 train from Ready to Paddington. Uh, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. with 167,000 users using their mobile banking apps. And the point is that we need to deliver something, uh, a great user experience, which is regardless of the choice in technology, the context and the location of users. It's actually very complex. So if I actually ask you, Jake, um, what are you expecting from a good mobile app? From a good mobile app? Probably yes. the top two things are yeah. I want it to load fast and I don't want it to drain my battery. All oh, right, okay, well, that's a good point. And actually you can expand it to compatibility, uh, reliability, uh, accessibility, maintainability, performance efficiency, usability. Um, you know, all these sort of aspects are key aspects of the user experience. And one of these attributes that actually you could miss, hours of work are going into dust. So good quality software might not be enough to deliver a great user experience, but we know that poor quality software, and one single attribute you actually miss, is going to massively impact the users. And there's also something different that it's different to traditional software. The missing ingredient here is emotions. Because when you actually, I think you touched base a little bit on it earlier, you want to be delighted you know, by, by apps and you want to continue using it. And there's also a, a sort of emotions that you have to take care of. So how do you actually take emotions and validate emotions to humanize the human sentiment on, on using these apps? So it's when you actually approach the development testing cycle and monitoring cycle, you have to embed two things. Assess all the various attributes of user experience that we talked about earlier, but also measuring, measuring the emotions of you know, the user experience that you're going to deliver. So how, how do you measure emotions? Well, I think that's going to be a good question for, uh, for Yaniv. All right, so Yaniv, how do you measure emotions? So we have several uh, capabilities within our uh, product lines that help you to ensure the uh, quality of your mobile app. Uh, first of all, uh, since mobile lifecycle is not uh, like other life cycles, the traditional software life cycle, in mobile the user feedback is very important. So for that we have uh, some capabilities that allowing us to measure the user feedback from app stores, there's various app stores. So we have a very strong sentiment analysis capabilities that is uh, sitting on top of our big data capabilities that allowing us to understand what are the good feedback but also what are the bad feedbacks the user uh, are uh, telling about the product and more than that we can do a breakdown of understanding what exactly was the bit the, the feedbacks, the bad feedbacks that the user gave and then propagate back into the development in order to understand how to fix the products according to the feedbacks. So, but you're not talking just about like somebody saying this app sucks or, or whatever they say when they type in feedback. You're talking, you also want, I, I assume, to measure uh, like, like crash tests and reliability reports and all those kinds of things, right? Yes. And that, so, so how do you address that? So maybe let me take you through our capabilities starting from the development to the production and then I can connect you all the uh, story into one uh, place. We start with a, a mobile center. We have a, a very extensive lab today that provide you the ability to test your software in uh, the lab. And we have the basic tools uh, as uh, we always have, which is the manual testing and automation that you can automate all your tests uh, in the lab. But the nice thing that we have is that you can leverage these assets also to production. So once you test it in the lab, you can use those assets in order to monitor your application in production and to be able to understand in production what is the user behavior and what are the popular devices, the popular transactions, and the, maybe the most popular uh, devices that you see crashes, and then take this, analyze it, and bring it back, this data, into the development in order to maybe guide the developers and the QA of where uh, to invest when they are building the lab, which devices to use, where are the most uh, problematic devices with crashes, and what are, and more important, what are 
the most popular transactions users are doing in production so it will help you to focus on the right regression test when you're doing your testing labs. So when you're saying the, the right transactions, you can tell which features of the app are used most. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. And then does that, so from a design perspective then, coming back, maybe coming back to you, does that translate to maybe uh, providing feedback for how you should relay out the app? Yes, so it's, it's all about really using uh, all the data in productions, whether it's technical in-app analytics, uh, reporting crashes, stability, metrics on uh, performance, which is the app launch, um, in, uh, measuring the impact on battery drain, as you said to you earlier, um, the impact on cellular data on, on, the, uh, on your plan. And all that, um, you know, getting those data, plus mining the App Store reviews, which are what I call the, uh, the vocal minority, yep. plus the in-app analytics, which actually covers the silent majority. And all of that, actually, is a combination of data that you have to flow back into the development cycle, again, to enhance the accuracy and precision of testing. And that's a major shift between traditional testing and development cycle, because you're not here to actually make a system work, you have to make a network for users, for actual human beings with specific yep. expectations. So it's all about combining those, those de technical data, the sentiment that users have on data, and craft new testing scenarios, prioritize development according to what actually users want. We always uh, introduced in the, our last version a crowd testing capabilities because we are appreciate so much the user feedback and the quality uh, in production. We understand that uh, some of our customers want to understand these feedbacks even before the application is on production. So for that we are delivering today a beta testing mechanism. We are partnering with uh, a partner, uh, his name is Uber Tester, who are providing us a crowd testing capabilities which provide us a professional testers in different locations in the world that can test the application in real conditions even before the customer is upload the application into production. So, so it's kind of like uh, beta testers. Exactly and the reason that it's important especially for mobile because it gives you the ability to understand what is the user feedback and how the application is behave in different locations in the world which is extremely important when it comes to mobile. Oh so this is actually like global global beta test. Absolutely. Nice. What else do you guys want uh, people to know about the HP mobile platform development? Well, there's, there's one thing I've, I was talking about earlier, is about measuring performance, right? So usually the way it's, it's done is using SDK, which is a sort of wrapper that you actually put and, and, and tag around the, uh, the applications and you actually ship it. And once the actually users like you and I are using, using app, this SDK reports data on a regular basis back to a platform. Now, what if the SDK that actually is being used to report those data is the cause of poor performance, is the cause of battery drain. Which, which that probably has happened. And it, ha and it does happen inside customers. And you know, we're seeing customers um, having to use like 20, 30, 40 different SDKs on top of their own code. So now there's also a way of, you know, I actually want to test the SDK I'm embedding into my applications and maybe I want to disable and control the SDKs to make sure that the user experience, which is about not crashing, you know, and the great performance and great functionality actually, you know, is, is fine. So we've also implemented what we call, um, uh, done integration with a company called SafeDK, which allows to actually provide the meta um, um, management of SDK, allowing our customers to actually control the, uh, the different SDKs they have embedded into the apps. And it's, it's, a, it's a sort of an emerging topic, but it's actually extremely critical again, because it's not about the app itself, it's about us as human beings using application. Yeah, so it's less, it's less about what the developers or the product yes. managers thought were a great idea, and it's more about does the app actually do what you expect it to do? Yes, and in the end, whatever we're doing around mobile applications, it, it has to be user-centric first. It's not about the app, it's about the users, the choice of technology, the various locations, the various contexts, the various uh, network conditions. And it's all about building, testing, monitoring, and optimizing the user experience on, based on those different topics and requirements. And, and it is always about the users. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it there and say thanks, Antoine. Thanks, Yannick.